Hello everyone, uh, this is another series from the International Emergency Medicine Education Project and today we are with uh, Professor uh, Fikri Abdul Zidane. Uh, he is a world-renowned uh, trauma surgeon, uh, clinical researcher, ultrasound expert and disaster medicine expert and he kindly accepted our invitation to be in this educational series. Uh, the series called uh, fundamentals in clinical research and he will share his 40 years expertise in the clinical research and uh, in this area. Uh, welcome professor. Thank you Arif. I mean uh, I, first of all I mean you, you know how I'm reluctant to do such a thing but you've been after me for one year and you convinced me only because you told me this is for the new generation. So the new generation actually, they will carry the message later on. So I like to, I mean, maybe share some of the lessons I learned, I can say. We are always learners, you have to understand. We keep learning and uh, you never reach, I mean, what you want in science uh, by relaxing because you know the science is changing. So I hope this uh, series will open your eyes on how do I think, maybe it's not the proper way, but just to tell you of other ways of trying to solve problems. And you will find it unique, why? Because this is an international emergency medicine education program. And I've been working in the, in the developing countries for a long time. And believe me, the logistics, the way of thinking, motivating people, making a change in your community, is completely different. I worked also in very advanced research methodology countries. I worked in Sweden with one of the top leaders in disaster medicine. And with Professor John Windsor, one of the most active uh, researchers in Australasia. I learned a lot of, of skills from them. But the real challenge in, with each of you is how can I be useful to my community? That is the real target of science. It's not the ego of being a famous professor or or getting rewards, or getting, believe me, I don't put even my rewards on the walls. The real thing you will find as students, as doctors, is you see your patients comes better, and you see your community is better. That should, that should really um, be the main motive inside you so you can make a change. It may take Excellent. longer time, but at the end, we are now after 40 years gaining a lot of fruits. I'm discussing Professor Arif today. So please listen to me. Take whatever you like. I know young generation are different <laughs> from us. And I wish yes, that are. will be useful. Actually, I'd say we are, but of course the new generations are definitely different. Definitely different. Uh, Prof, uh, today's episode is about, you know, what makes a doctor a good clinical researcher. So what is your... Uh, advices what is your actually experiences about this topic yeah i think uh, we go back to the basics for any job you need two pillars you need to be honest sincere in what you want to achieve and you should be competent so honesty without competency will not work competency with honesty is even more dangerous because you can modify things you would know the facts and you modify them for your interest but the third pillar, which I really I like, like to add to in research, which is different from others, you should have a thinking mind. You should have always a trying to answer questions. You should have always a mind which is critically thinking. Is this right? Can I do this? Is really what is written true or false? How can I apply this in my community? Is it relevant to my community? Does it benefit my patients? These simple questions are the core of clinical research. One of the, I call it misconceptions in the developing countries, they think they want to do top research. That means either it goes to science or nature or it's not research. No, research can be very simple. Research can be very useful. Does this apply to my community? Can this be helpful to my people? How can I solve the transportation of my village if I don't have a car? So, and this they look simple, but uh, we've actually developed very excellent simulators from nothing, very, very cheap, very useful for the communities, from basic things. And this is one of the pillars of disaster medicine, by the way. 
How can you in a disaster be able to get solutions which are new and no one thought of it? So, so you're talking about the simplicity? To thinking simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, you have uh, re defining a research question is a complete issue. We'll discuss it yeah, Arif, later on. Yeah. But the three pillars for you to be a, be a good researcher is really to be sincere in your work, to be uh, really well trained, which means you are competent, and third, you really should have a thinking mind defining your research question. And then you, once you have these factors, you can put your step and you can go forward. Yeah, I, I, I can agree more. Uh, the, the, the many times I visited to your office, and many times actually I heard this uh, from your, you actually. The, the, when a clinician or researcher knock your door, yeah. uh, you you have a, a kind of straightforward, you know, uh, the thing that you're saying to them, <laughs> and you ask, you know, I want this, 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 and 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 and. I, I, I was thinking that these are the, actually the, you know the the pillars yeah, of yeah, the of the, right. the, the the what he wants. So yeah, the, the, they, they go can, to can, can, what yeah, are yeah, they? Yeah, can yeah they, they came to the, they go back to the same three principles, Arif. And of course, I have a lot of demand. People come to me from students, PhD students, up to professors. Actually, most of the time now is refining research more than training people from scratch. I leave yeah. this job for my young people, and then once they go up to assist some person above, then yeah. I show them how to do the refined things. But the principles are the same. Uh, research training is a longitudinal process. The, when a student comes to me, I tell him, look, I have some papers rejected 16 times, 14 years. And if you have the gut to continue for that, of course, most of the time, last week, we got two papers accepted for a PhD student without revision in a top journal in sequence, which is one in 10,000. But the student should be prepared. And these are simple. Anyone who knocks my door, of course, I, I should look to my time. I learned from Professor Stin Lindquist not to promise anything that you cannot do. I, and I'm not going in details in that. He's a great mentor. He's actually one of the first disaster medicine professor in Europe. And I learned from him a lot. He never see the work that he didn't respect or promise. Never give promises that you cannot do it. It's much wiser, uh, wiser to tell a student, I'm sorry, my time is there, go to such a guy, than to promise and not to fulfill your promise. And anyone who knocks my door and says, I want to turn from you, Professor Abu Zidane, I say, okay, it's simple. My, my rules are very simple. You accept him, I'm more than happy to accommodate him. So what him. are those rules? <laughs> yeah, the rules are very simple. Honesty, integrity, hard work, persistence, patience, commitment, and obedience. And if you can you try, uh, please a little bit, you know, extend this, uh, the meanings of this? Yeah, so okay. Each uh, one. Yes, honesty. I mean, you can be the best scholar, but you are not honest with yourself. I, I can give you an example. Many people have the data in front of them. And then they start fishing in it. And of course, by probability in statistics, if you do a lot of analysis, you will get by 5%. Up. If you do 100 analysis, 5% will be significant. So they, what would they do? They go back and rewrite the question to fit the, the finding, which is dishonest. Why? Because with each trial you do, the probability should be completely different. We deal with probabilities in our analysis. So you have to be honest with yourself. Is this really a prospective study in which I make the question, and then I do the analysis, and then I get the outcome? And then you accept the outcome. I remember one of the... He is now, he was uh, one of my uh, students, his name is Al Isai. He came to me and uh, said, Prof, can you help me in a study? Okay, we agreed on it. And then I had a beautiful data, and this published in our journal of surgery, you can go to it. Comparing if a car hits a pedestrian, does it differ between a four wheel or a small car? Logically, we know the energy equals half the mass by the velocity square. So if the mass is more, the energy should be more, the energy should be more. And then I did the analysis for him. Uh, Isa, this is the result. He came back to me, Prof, the results are negative. I told him, yes, the results are negative. But you have to explain for me why it's negative. And he went into the circus and he came after almost one month. And we knew the reason. Why? Because if you say half mass by versus square, the cars in our city really run in very high speed, so the mass has no effect. 
And then we said, okay, the mass will be useful only if the speed is less than 40 kilometers per hour. What does that imply? Because a lot of companies in Europe are trying to put friendly pumpers in the front. So they, they, they get a, like a balloon opens once you hit someone. But that will not work here simply because our speed is high. So now you have to be honest with yourself. And then, of course, research needs a proper training. You have to really to, to, to get the, the pro it's non-ethical to do research if you don't know how to do it. I, I'll simplify that. Part. Can you do an operation for an appendectomy without being trained as a surgeon? You cannot. Impossible. Yeah. It's unethical. The same thing, the effective research is much, much, much more than the effective one person. So you have to be honest. You have to be knowledgeable. You have to be persistent. Uh, you can be surprised, I will, I will tell the students. I've been collecting the data on camera-related injuries for 20 years prospective. Can you imagine <laughs> that? Because the numbers are small. And we are actually one of the, our group is one of the leading groups worldwide on, and it came from a small idea. I will discuss this in more detail how to generate this question. But you have to be persistent. You know, I used to go myself writing everything, putting yeah. it on my form. Why do I say obedience? I'm not like a dictator, you know me. I'm very friendly and I discuss with people. But once you big to a big group, a research group, it's a lot of time management. It's a lot of decision making. It's a lot of collaboration. So you have to work as one part of this team. You cannot do whatever you like if you agree. And it's all agreement, you know. We will discuss how to write a paper later on. If you are in a group of five people who want to write, everyone should be committed to what he does. It's like a football team. You cannot say, yeah. yeah, you cannot, uh, you want to make goals, but what about the goalkeeper? What about <laughs> the guy at the back? Everyone should do his job, so all of us are winning as a, sing a complete team. So this needs obedience, persistence, patience, commitment, hard work. It's very easy. Yeah. I think the, we will speak about the thinking wind in detail later on. But you cannot be, you can be all of this. But you cannot be a researcher because you don't have a thinking mind. I hope. <laughs> I'm ready for your uh, unexpected questions. Uh, you can ask me now whatever you like. Okay, I, I, I think yeah, we can, we can uh, the, to finish the first, you know, episode. You know, uh, what makes a doctor a good clinical researcher? Uh, I, I think the points you raised already is very, very important. I hope you know the our trainees uh, listen to this episode and get some idea for their future research interest. Uh, all right, Prof, let me ask you some questions other <laughs> than the research. Are you a coffee or tea person? Oh, you, got, you are asking me a difficult <laughs> question, Arif. I used to be a tea person. Really? All my life. You know, when I was a medical student, I used to make the big jar, I'm sorry, with my hand, full when I study and I drink coffee and uh, the coffee drink. But I saw you nowadays you drink coffee. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I learned that habit from uh, New Zealand, I, honestly. And uh, because that's the, the common practice, I then I got, and the problem with coffee, you can get caffeineism, of course, if you drink too much. But I, it, uh, by the way, there is a lot of studies and I noticed personally, if I'm really trying to answer a very difficult question and get involved with it, sometimes it takes three, four days, believe me, if you want really. And you keep thinking about it in the home, between yeah. your family. What are you thinking about? I'm, I'm really, the question is, is involving all my mind. Uh, sometimes difficult questions to answer. So the coffee helps? Coffee will increase. By the way, there is uh, the study of, uh, I think it was uh, from New York, if I remember that emergency physicians who drink coffee at night, they make less mistakes. And it was published in a good journal maybe 15 years ago. And I'm, when I say something, <laughs> I, I know that it's true, but I know I can't. Uh, this is supposed yeah. to be not a lecture, neither. But yeah. I can, uh, so. Yeah. This is just sharing your experience. Yeah, yeah, yes. And if you, you want to know, you know, more deeply about your personal life, mm -hmm. of course, uh, which coffee then? I mean, all right, you, you choose coffee nowadays. Uh, you know, I like the Turkish coffee, you know that. I really, I like uh, this <laughs> coffee. Prof, uh, thank you very much for the first episode, and we want to be with you in the, the upcoming 12, 13, 15, yeah, whatever the number is, the episodes. And uh, we are learning a lot from you, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a very nice uh, the, the series for the trainees. Thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, uh, I like to speak with students, please. Please, you know, my students, even fellow professors here, 
don't let works, your words speak about you, let your work speak about you. It's like a, an advice from a, a, an, an old man to his young generation. Uh, I'm just documenting this because I hope it will be useful for everyone. Thank, thank you, Prof. Yeah, thank you very much, Ari. Thank you.